Hello everybody, welcome to another art talk and live painting by Paintings of Steve Brown. What's up? What's up? Alright, so we're going to paint this little survival of the fittest. Uh, I'm going to hopefully keep this uh, in camera. We're going to aim to get rid of all the gold and then break apart the uh, border and just talk about, I kind of want to talk about the nature of art fulfillment in art in 2020. I've been thinking about a lot of, you know, the, the, what, what art is to a lot of people, you know, what art is to artists, what art is to people who buy art, and kind of my thoughts on why why it is the way it is. I think that a lot of artists really have a good idea of the art they want to make. They come up with a very uh, nice piece of art years ago, maybe recently, that a lot of people have gravitated towards. And it's had some success in the market. It's definitely what I did. And uh, something that sells something that sells and people want to buy, because making art in your basement all day long, I'm actually pretty much in the attic making this, but doing that all day long is fine, just making art is fine, but to be an artist, you need your art to be out there. I really believe that. You can't be a full-fledged artist without actually showing your art without people knowing that you're making art, without receiving some of the brutal parts about being an artist, which is getting criticized and failing. You also can't be an artist without being fully able to finish a project and then show that project to other people. Already I'm gonna try to keep this in camera. A lot of people ask me about my uh, what I use. I've been using this, uh, what is it, triple zero? Uh, it's already, there's already too much paint on it. I think this is a triple zero round, and this is like my go-to. It's, it's long, it's kind of long. You can see the, it's long for most people, but it's pretty short for me. Sometimes I use even longer ones, but this one has been my go-to for like backgrounds and putting down a base uh, base color. Let's make sure that this is nice. And, oh my god, oh my god. Right, so, um, so the the act of showing your art. That is something that I have only really been exposed to on the scale that I like to see it in the past five years. I'm going to Burning Man events for five years, both local, yeah, this is not going to stay, I need room for my, my fist to be on here, um, both local um, Burning Man events, but then also the big one, and what you're able to do when you are an artist surrounded by artists is bring something that doesn't have to speak to somebody right away. Something that doesn't have to immediately elicit, oh, that's a tree, or, oh, I'm supposed to put my hand in here and the whole thing spins. You know, there doesn't have to be um, something that is extremely um, easy to, to read. You can bring something a little bit more experimental and that really opened my eyes to making your art extremely niche. Obviously, there is something awesome about making art that everybody can see and everybody understands what it is. Uh, magic cards are a very easy way to do that. Uh, magic cards are, you're just extending the art. You're putting, even if you're replacing the art, most of the time, if it's a subject, if it's a creature, you're 
er erasing that art and putting in another creature. Or for me, uh, I've been doing, uh, I did those, but uh, a bunch of force of wills, but I mean, everyone knows what force of will is, so mostly I was putting in, um, putting in like memes or jokes uh, or other magic iconography. So for me, magic cards are very, very easy to make art on because you're automatically uh, skipping the, oh, I don't know what this is, part of art, which uh, is hard for a lot of people. They make art that they like, they make art that makes sense in their brain. You see I'm kind of like working with one, one little palette that I'm like continually just like moving over and over. I kind of like that. I like it's like really easy for blending. If you just use like one little spot and you keep on blending your colors into it. So then, if you need to, because I'm making like a dark ochre, um, if you need to get a light ochre, it's right there. And if you need to go in between, it's easy just to mix the two together. The ease of painting with magic cards is wonderful, but does it does it really make you an artist if you are just taking somebody else's art and extending it? I say yes. Don't don't think that I'm saying that what I'm doing is not art. At some point, I mean, this is the second time I've done the survival of the fittest. The first one was a um, commission, and the second one was someone who liked that commission, um, asking for it. So for me right now, this is literally just paint, not paint by numbers, but paint by, I'm using my own art as a reference and I'm trying to recreate it. So for me, this is not, I mean, this is not crazy fun because it's work. It's just work. It's just, okay, this person paid me money. I get the card. I create. In my opinion, the coolest survival of the fittest you could possibly have, but especially for the money. Because survival of the fittest are like 200 bucks now. <laughs> so for me, charging under $100 by a long shot is, uh, I think people are happy with that. But also, it's, you know, it's something that if I have, let's say, I do five survival of the fittest in my lifetime, five of these. With this exact, um, oh, this should extend out. This this exact coloring, um, this exact, you know, everything on it. Um, hopefully, that would be that would be the art. The art is I've done this five times. Not that I did this one time, uh, and it was cool. Uh, but the fact that I did this five times would be um, part of the art, if not the art, was me being able to replicate a painting five times. Now it's super easy to replicate a painting when your subject is already done. That makes everything really easy. And obviously I'm not replicating it 100%. But is that art? I think that it is. Being able to replicate something is art. Uh, I actually think that some of the best um, people that have created a lot of goodness for art, they uh, they started or they continued on as uh, people who just, you know, give me a Rembrandt, I'll make a Rembrandt. Uh, good, good, for good forgers really made the art world what it is for America, but I digress. The... The act of being an artist, it's my subject, right? That's what I want to talk about. <laughs> act of being an artist, first, you have to make something everyone wants to see. Second, you have to show it. Third, you have to be able to, in my opinion, continue to give the people what they want. Um, I mean, it's easy to say, and I think that most people in my generation can say that their favorite artist or their favorite painter, Salvador Dali, uh, I am right up there with everybody. Uh, at the age of 20, I got a Dali tattoo, so 
you know, that was an easy one. It was a no-brainer. Um, but the the thing that I liked about Dali and the thing that I like about artists is that it's easy to see their style. And I've been listening to a couple artists say, you know, kind of project, how do you get a style? How do you, how do you, you know, put in an Amazon order to get an artistic style? And obviously, I don't have to say it, it's not easy. It's not that simple. However, I think a huge part of it is finding an artist that you like, stealing what you can, and over time, taking the things you like about that, once you gain the skills to be able to make your art have some success, you will then start stripping away the things that you have taken from those people, and what you're left with, hopefully, is your own style. With magic arts, it's very hard to make your own style. I feel like I have this exploded border thing. Um, I've seen other people do it really well. Uh, like Kevin Alters does a good one. I think Scourge Alters does a really good one. There's a bunch of foil pill people that are like the exploded border masters. And, and I'm not saying that mine's truly unique. I haven't even got to the exploded border part that I'm about to do on this. But the... The way that any of us grow is by learning. And in the art world, there is an abundance, which I'm, I'm not shitting on, I think it's good, I'm in this group, that have not gone to a ton of schooling for art. So how are you supposed to learn? How are you supposed to learn how to become a good artist? How to become a full artist? How to have your own style? How to then monetize that style? And how to make your way in the art world? A lot of times, it's seeing what other people have done on Instagram and taking it. And creating it for yourself. Creating what you've seen for yourself. And you can monetize it. I don't think there's a... Um, I don't think there's an artist out there who, if you practice things in your style and then monetize a little bit, if those artists are not... I mean... I can go into a bunch of stuff, but if those artists care about their style of art catching on and or their community thriving, I think all artists would be pretty okay with if someone has a style that looks a little bit like the other person's style, if they're okay, kind of going for it. Obviously, you don't take someone one for one your image and completely don't throw extra stuff in it. At least change the colors around drastically and don't monetize it. If you're going to monetize something, don't just straight up uh, copy somebody's art piece, obviously. If you're not monetizing, I am absolutely fine, and I believe most artists would be absolutely fine, with you actually practicing off that person. Fully, one for one, trying to recreate it. Obviously, you're not... You're not making money off of it, you're not, but you're learning, you're learning what makes that person that you love great, you know, you're, you're, you're finding what you like about that artist, and exploring why you like that artist, and I think that that is extremely healthy for art, I think it's extremely healthy for humans to have, uh, role models, to have, um, to have, I'm gonna say idols, I know it's not the coolest thing in the world, but to have people that they look up to, because it's having a mentor does not come free, does not come cheap. Most people who need mentors don't have mentors. I think that in the altering world, which is what I'm doing right now, I'm altering a magic card, there is not a large chance I don't know if I like this little guy right here there is not a large chance for mentoring because a lot of us are doing this for profit so why and I'm not this is not me I will mentor all right but why would somebody teach someone hand hold their hand how to do something if 
they're going to be in direct competition with that person. Now I know certain people, like Scourge, uh, has a video up online about how he does his foil peels, which is unbelievable. If you're, if you want to learn from the best, it's a 30 minute uh, process video on Scourge Alters uh, YouTube video. I, I could not recommend it highly enough. I watched it and understood, um, you know, what level I need to get to. I've only done a couple of foil peels, but they're just for me. They're not, I'm not monetizing jack shit on that. But it's, it's really amazing the level um, of detail that some people go to, and I would never have guessed that that's the level of detail unless I watched this YouTube video with him. Um, which, thanks to Scorch Alters for having the, those things out, and I'm trying to um, have these series maybe once a month, maybe twice a month, that you're watching right now. By the way, thank you for watching all the way into we're 16 minutes in to, you know, just talk about the, the state of Magic the Gathering altering. Um, I did do a short-lived podcast at one point in my life that may come back if this YouTube channel, uh, you know, picks up. But the, um, the, the point I'm trying to get to is that if you like what someone does as an artist, as an altruist, as a painter, whatever you are, oh man, I'd love just smudging with my finger a little bit when I know it's like wet paint on dry paint. It gives that really nice like dry brushed um, look. I suggest everybody uses their fingers in the paintings. There it is. I'm not gonna get into a uh, do a you know, nature, uh, you know, man versus God conversation, but fingers are by far one of the best tools in, in art. I don't think there's, uh, there's many paintbrushes or tools that will mimic how good a, uh, finger can be sometimes. But anyway, the, um... The level that altars are at right now, I wish they were. I wish it was more popular. I really do. I know that um, Commander's Quarters um, did a YouTube video on altars, uh, and you know what? My, I only really see a big dip in my in my orders when a new set comes out, which is extremely. I mean, it's valid. Very valid. The level at which uh, I get to do these, I am truly thankful. I love altering, and with these COVID times and me trying to dedicate more fully to art, this gives me a really nice thing to do while staying in my home. Anyway, I, man, this, like, texturing is so much fun. I really like doing this. It's a pleasure just to texture things and get this weird, dirty smell everywhere. So what you do to get a little bit off. Another reason I like uh, magic cards is that you can erase really, 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 really easily with just a toothpick. Uh, I also use a uh, brush that I cut the head off. This is like a just a shitty brush. What is this is a two. This is a two, like a big two, round, and I just cut it down to like a nub. You get this wet, and you can just. I mean, I don't have anything I really need to erase, but you can just put a little bit of pressure on it and just erase it right through. And this is for anything you get on a text box or anything. And this will not. You can press down as hard as you want, and it won't. It won't put any, uh, any scratches or anything. That's another thing you have to worry about uh, with your toothpick. Do not press down hard. You will put scratches in it. Do it very light. Put a good amount. Put like one droplet of water on at the max, but that one droplet of water is perfect. You can kind of move it around. As long as water doesn't like pool on your magic card for more than like a second or two, you're fine. You just wipe it right off. 
and the water will come right up. <sighs> so let's talk about art in the art in the years of COVID, the year of COVID, the years of COVID, the however many years this is gonna last. And magic in general in, in COVID. I mean in your co- in the comments below. I mean, again, if you've watched 20 minutes in, you're 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 a real one, and I thank you forever. But if you made it this far, in the comments below, how much magic you've been playing? For me personally, uh, now that Play DH and Spell Table have really taken off and are working really well, as well as you know, uh, CDH ch- uh, like smaller ones to play CDH, which I do play CDH and mid power and high power. So whatever you guys want to play with me. I run a dope CDH deck, Omnath, Locus of Creation, uh, Dockside Extortionist deck. That rips. Uh, I also run Breach Lines. So it's Breach Lines and Dockside Extortionist Lines. That deck is good. Um, if you guys ever want to play with me, just email me. The email link will be in the description of this. But anyway, how much, how much magic are you playing? And are people buying as much paper you know i i started getting i started my altars i don't remember december 2019 no 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 longer than that i've been doing altars for like about a year and a half i painted pretty much my whole life before that uh, but uh, altars really rekindled me uh, painting so i've been doing altars for man this is coming out really good uh, I've been doing altars for about a year and a half and right when COVID struck and we knew it was bad like uh, my friend was going to fly down and all of the uh, all of the flights all got cancelled, everyone got refunded that's for me when I knew it got real bad and the lockdowns I was like okay lockdown I understand that and then when they're just like, okay, this trillion dollar uh, industry is shut down. That's what's like, whoa. Okay. Um, so that's when I started to do this full time. And that is what I'm doing right now is altering and running my social media full time. By the way, for any altruists, I am using. I am using Golden Heavy. I feel like Golden Heavy. Let's get a brand new one. Golden Heavy is the best you can use. Um, uh, all my all my uh, things are on a wet palette, so they're diluted a little bit. Once you start like mixing it, obviously, if I take from the top this little glob, it's not um, it's not going to be watered down. But anything that hits this surface is going to water down pretty fast. Um, so if you, what was I gonna say? What was my point? Oh yeah, just what I'm using. Oh yeah, uh, this okra, what is it? yellow oxide. I will say to the day I die, this is like that is the color that is in like every freaking magic card. I'm telling you, you use it for everything and getting a good quality yellow oxide is absolutely paramount it's it's changed my life man all right that is a good amount of texture i am happy that looks like it should be where it's supposed to be actually dark ochres of everything i call it ochre i know it's oxide but to me it's the color of okra that's how i was trained when i was actually painting not magic cards for no money and for disappointment being an artist is, and I know I'm gonna say it, and this is gonna be, you know, laughed out of the, laughed out of the room. But I think being an artist is one of the hardest things you can do. Obviously, having a drug addicted child or something is is worse. I just read this really sad post about somebody who's, you know, addicted to heroin and asking for money from the family. I'm sure that's worse. Okay, I'm saying in your life's doing all right, what's one of the hardest things you can do? I think making art and showing art is one of the hardest things you could, I guess it's one of the hardest things you can control to put inside of your life. 
the the balls it takes to show somebody a painting you've spent you know I have a painting that's not done that I've spent 20 hours on you know and it's still not done and it's still nowhere near fucking done and 20 hours is probably conservative I've probably spent more than that the the ability to say hey I made this from scratch you know obviously this is not from scratch but I do if you've been on my Instagram I do a good amount of start with a white seat, white um, gridded piece of paper and I just start from scratch to show somebody something you made from scratch or that you hauled across the country to show to strangers that that will eat you up if it doesn't go the way you think it should go also making that thing whatever it is there is no blueprint yes you can go to art school yes you can watch a billion YouTube videos on how to how to be the artist of your of your fantasies but the actual execution, the actual time you need to dedicate to a craft, the actual uh, attention to detail that a lot of people don't have, the overcoming ADD or whatever you're, you're conflicted, conflicted with. I mean, there's, there's a bunch of stuff that will stop someone in their tracks from doing art in any facet. The rate of success for art is very few and far between, and that's, you know, to, to willingly put yourself into such a thing, uh, I think is one of the hardest things a human can do. And I'm not saying that I'm strong or brave for doing it, because this is what I've, I've done all my life. Like, if I wasn't doing this, I, I you know, I've always painted, I've always uh, thought that art was the coolest. Nothing's cooler than art, in my opinion. So, because of that, this is... I'm not saying I'm brave. I'm saying that someone that picks it up later in life, or people who have found success, which I have not found success yet. You know, this video will get, you know, 50 views in a week. You know, 100 views, maybe 200 views in a month. Like, I'm not successful. I'm saying the people who have made it, it's one of the hardest things to make it in. And you are not... I mean, yes, sometimes right place, right time. Sometimes it is who you know. I mean, a lot of times I'm sure it is who you know. But for some people, it is sure, sheer perseverance and sheer grind to get you to a place that very, 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 very few people have gotten to. Very, very, very few people have... I mean, at this point with the age of the internet, no one's gotten... No artist has gotten the kind of recognition that some artists get. You know, yeah. Picasso and, and, and Dali and Rembrandt and, and, you know, all these people, yes, obviously they've had success, but there are some people, there's 10 hundred, can put up a pencil drawing. And in a second, in one second, can put that pencil drawing on all of his platforms and get a million views in a day or more for just a pencil drawing and then sell that pencil drawing for a hundred bucks plus easily very easily he is extremely um you know popular if you told rembrandt that yes uh you can instantaneously sell anything you do and or have feedback for everything you do i mean he's never had that kind so we're, we're in a new era of of art is kind of what I'm saying and that now what the the challenges that an artist has to overcome is not that's oh yeah oh yeah there's lots of the challenges now for artists are not to because back in the day a lot of art pieces took a year or two maybe more they go, okay, um, if I sell this one painting, I can make my rent, I can pay off my house, I can eat for a year. For some artists. For some artists, because I didn't have, you know, any way of taking pictures or anything, you know, they were a working artist where they can 
I'll just paint what I see, because that's the only option we have, you know? Well, there's only one option, and that is getting a painter to paint your childhood house, or your dog, or your wife, or you, um, you know, or your husband, I'm sorry to put this all under the lens of a man, um, but you know what I'm saying, the, there's a lot more work for some artists, kind of what I'm doing, you know, like I'm just extending the art when I'm doing a couple of these a day, uh, but then there's also some artists that became so well known and, and were so good that some paintings took as long as they were going to charge them for it, so they were going to charge them. Um, was going to charge them for that painting. And that's, they would just painstakingly, again, the masters of, of you know, the, the 16, the 17, I mean, the 1500s, obviously, um, they needed to be perfect um, in their painting, so it took a long time. The Mona Lisa took four years to make. The Mona Lisa was not a, I mean, it wasn't something that he sold. But it just gives you the scale, and now the scale is gone. There is no scale. And to be an artist that is making money, you have to put out in this, in this day and age. Uh, you have to create pieces that will continue to um, see play, <laughs> you know, to put in a magic term. Uh, you have to continue to make pieces that um, fill your... Uh, oh, that's... Is that the perfect color? Did I just get it in one shot? Look at me. Look at us. Um, so now we're going to do a border. Kind of splitting apart here. The key to a good border is by making recognizable shapes, in my opinion. It kind of looks like they actually belonged in... Yeah. Belonged in that uh, spot. So I'm going to do all my big pieces first. I kind of like broke apart. Big, nice, solid chunks. And I'm just doing, I mean, I, I really don't care if they're saturated in there. I'm just kind of putting a shape, and then I'm going to go back in and make them look a little better afterwards. You dig? I'm just putting down the shape, my little road map. So my point, if I have a point, is that being an artist nowadays... It is quantity over quality, which obviously if you do both, good job. Quantity over quality, but also, I mean, you're also contending with the whole world. You're not just contending, oh, I should not do the dark parts right now. What am I doing? I'm getting too excited. I am getting too excited. You're contending with the whole world, which is something that the tattoo uh, community has been doing for, has been complaining about for a while. It's no longer, oh, you're the best in New York, you know? Now you're like, you have to contend with, oh, you need to be the best in your style, which, I mean, there can only be one best in your style, and you're going up against, you know, rich kids from, from California who have gone to art school literally just to be a tattoo artist, you know? It's, it's tough. It's a tough life out there for tattoo artists. But, um, you know, for altering, even for doing this, uh, there are obviously tiers. Uh, where would I rank in the tiers? I don't know. Voice in my head asked me. Um, I would probably, you know, obviously S tier would be like, uh, Klug and, and, uh, and MIB and, uh, A tier be people like uh, probably Scorch, Alters, Kevin, Alters, and there's, a, there's a good amount. Um, I would say maybe a B tier, maybe a C tier is where I'd land. Um, so I don't do some things that a lot of Alterists like to do, and that's full art reimaginations. Like, obviously I do a couple, I've done 
uh, I'm starting to try to do more memes. I think that that, that sells really well. So you know, I'm always trying to do something that people will be interested in. But the... Um, let's do so. so now I'm just going to go over what I did with the big pieces and then just put like a really nice, solid, lighter green splash right over there. Not splash, but, you know, solid block of color. I'm just doing a little... Can you see what I'm doing? Weep. A little bit of white, and then taking this like green blackish and putting it in. Let's actually take it right from the thing. I've been squirting way too much paint, <laughs> way too much paint in on my white canvas lately. Right, let's put a lot more green in there. There you go. So I'm just gonna do a nice solid green. Because if you look at this green, it's got like some lights, some darks. I'm gonna try to make this look. I like this like kind of chocolate chips in here. It's cool. I'll put some more chocolate chips in there. See, they, they kind of look like they're, they'd be in mint chocolate chips. They're like that size. I don't know what what kind of mint chocolate chip everyone likes, but in the uh, brand that I was raised on, Friendlies, they always came in that that like thin rectangle. That was, that was the standard size for your mint chocolate chip. Put a little thin right thing right down there. Uh, that's good for the big pieces, for the tiny pieces. So now for your tiny pieces, you do little squares, little dots, little triangles, little triangle. This one I got real explodey with, but I mean, it is what it is. Oh yeah, let me put this big one right down here. Uh, how is this exploding off? Probably like up here. Just let me make that. Make it more on the tail. Well, that looks fine, right? Just bursting off. This one just might be like lost. So, we're going to let that dry a little bit. Um, the... Yeah, we're so good. The way to make art, in my opinion, is to make something someone has to actually look at and consider. When people do hyper-realism, here's me complaining about hyper-realistic paintings, Obviously, it takes skill. Obviously, it's not easy to do. But does anyone... Who's asking for it? Who's asking for a hyper-realistic painting? You know what I mean? We have cameras. I, I, I hate to be that guy, but we have cameras. So you are doing a hyper-realistic painting. That could just happen. So you're like, oh yeah, this could happen. Some lady could have honey on her. Like, that's like the the hyper-realistic thing that everybody's doing. It's just a woman with honey on her. Which, you know, whatever. That's cool. I'm fine with girls having honey on them, but it's literally, it's it's 80% of hyper-realistic paintings right now uh, is a woman with honey on her. Or a wet, a wet woman. Everything's a woman with some kind of liquid on her because, you know, porn. So anyway, who's asking? Who's truly asking for hyper-realistic paintings. I think that the paintings that look, that, that really make art art, something that you can't have in your real life, something you'll never see. A woman with 65 eyes and like there's a ribbon going through each one, like a connected ribbon. I was talking to an artist online who did one like that. And it's got this like cool, like, you're losing your mind while you're looking at this painting vibe. You know, you're looking at some girl's uh, eyes exploding off her face, and then the something that would never happen. Obviously, you can envision right now as I'm talking a woman with 65 eyes, you know? Okay, this woman's got a ton of eyes. But now, you add in this, like, 
ribbon that's like multicolored rainbow ribbon that is twisting and going through all of her eyes. All of her little eye sockets are getting this ribbon twisted in and out of it. And it's something you will never, ever see in nature. It's something that would never, ever cross your mind as to something you would think about as you lay your head on your pillow. It was something so fresh and nice to see that it it brought my it brought my sense of It, like, confused me a little bit, you know? It confused me a little bit. It made me want to look at it. It made me want to consider it. it made me want to... Uh, I shared it on my Instagram, and the artist... Uh, ooh, this is such a nice shape right there. If I could make all my shapes look like that. Look at that. That one right there. Focus easily. There we go. This one right here is, like, the best. So we just went in and uh, for the breakup arts, I, didn't, I went in with the, the closest green I can find to like, it's kind of like the base color here. And then you let that dry and then you do your shadows. So you do your darker ones. Oh, that does not look right. You do your darker ones and then you go back in and you do your lighter ones. That is the way you make a shape. And then we get to do the real fun part at the very end here. First we have to actually let's do boom. Okay, so now we're gonna do our uh, blood. So right now I just got like my, my standard red. Um, if you look at this red, it's definitely darker a little bit more brown. So I'm gonna kind of spread out the red a little bit. I'm gonna add my black in there. Mix it in real good. I just want it to look a little darker. And another good thing about painting on magic cards is you can test your color. That's still just a tiny bit too bright. We're gonna add a little bit of ochre in it, which is definitely going to make it brighter. And then we're gonna add a little bit of, oh god, there's green on there. Then you're gonna add a little bit more black. A little bit more black. Mix it in good, because we're only going to use red ones, so why not get the right color? There we go. Boom. So now we're going to take this blood splatter. Huh. Throw it all around. Get a little bit of sweat on your finger. It kind of where you are. So let's go with a lot of blood up here. Yeah, yeah. Gonna show the blood splatter. Definitely got everywhere. I love this art. Just wish the art was bigger. I wish this art was just a little bit bigger so I can extend the goblins out. I definitely like went the wussy route and didn't you know, extend the goblins too much. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of blood on each of these little guys. He kind of like, as he was getting axed, you gotta like hit it onto these things, and that's kind of why it's exploding. Now, if I wanted to, this was, um, if this was a personal one, I like going crazy on the text box, putting a bunch of weird shit. Like, I would put like blood splatter everywhere. But because someone bought this, I don't want to, you know, go overboard it to a place where they don't want it or it's too gruesome you know what i mean like who knows if this is the present this could be a present for a dad or i mean i've gotten it, i'm not this is not a, a sexist thing uh, there is a ton of women players nowadays it's different when i was playing magic in in school let's go a little darker now we're in the cleanup phase. I'm I'm looking at this at a different angle to see this like gold that didn't get uh, fully done up. So I'm just making sure I hit all the gold around the 
parts here, and it's okay to go a little bit over onto the border. Again, if you're watching right now, thank you very, very much. So who knows if my rambling make anybody happy, except for myself, to give myself a uh, something to do while painting this. Oh, alright, so now we just have a bunch of straight lines, so we need to obfuscate it again. Uh, put some texture in there. Too much texture. A little bit more snowball. Okay, now the full on cleanup. Take a bit. Get that one bead of water on that. Very lightly. Alright, well, I was at 46 minutes. If you have watched up to this point, I know that you're already liked and subscribed, so thank you. If you have watched all the way up to this point, the one thing I don't know is who you are and why you did such a thing. So, if you could, please comment below, you know that you've watched all the way through, and that you really liked me talking about art in 2020, or you really liked me just like taking a nice slow pace and just talking nonsense, what would you like me to talk about? You can add that in there too. Hey, you know, I want you to do your normal podcast that I did a year ago about, you know, a high-powered See, uh, have high powered EDH, but I want you to do that while painting this. You know, like that. I would be more than happy to do so. So please, in the comment, tell me if you watch all the way to this, and then please tell me what you'd like to see. And then you get whatever you ask for, because you have watched and listened to 47 minutes. Let me ramble. Oh, my hand's gotten a shake. Let me ramble like a crazy person. Dark, so we make the other side For What I like about these paints is that it goes on nice and big and dark, and then as it dries, it definitely maps down and flattens out. Thank you so much for watching. You are an angel, and I look forward to talking to you about how you'd like this to go forward. Thanks, bye.